Hello class and welcome to this A Nightmare on Elm Street NES walkthrough right here on Video Games 101 by way of Let's Play with Brigands. All this month we are doing walkthroughs on spooky, scary games and we are kicking off with certainly one which makes the cut in A Nightmare on Elm Street. There's Freddy Krueger with his trademark disfigured burned face and his clawed hands, his glove right there for slashing kids in their sleep. That's scary enough, but what's really scary about this game is how difficult it is. This is not an easy game. They're pretty generous with the lives and continues they give you, but you can start to burn through those very quickly at certain sections of the game, especially near the end, with some of the tougher bosses, some of the tougher platforming. In terms of difficulty, I'm going to go ahead and give A Nightmare on Elm Street an 8 out of 10, which on the frustration scale equates to writing a threatening letter to the developer. Another LJN title, but as usual, LJN not the developer. In this case, you might pick up on from the uh, music itself, this is a rare developed title. Rare as in the developer rare. A lot of great games. This one, it's not a bad game actually, I'm not gonna come out and say it's bad. It's challenging, but we can help you. Hence the walkthrough. So let's run the intro and get into this A Nightmare on Elm Street NES walkthrough right here on Video Games 101. Alright, as we start a new game, we can choose how many players we have. Up to four players. That is not a, a typo. Fluff's going to talk a bit more about that later. As we take a look at the controls for Nightmare on Elm Street, pretty basic. Attack and jump, though these change with each Dream Warrior that you're controlling. We'll talk about that a little bit later. As we take a look now at the Briggs notes, the keys to beating this game in this A Nightmare on Elm Street NES walkthrough. First, take your time. There is no timer in this game. Well, actually there is. We, we have the sleep timer in the top left. But uh, when that runs out, you enter the dream world, and that's not necessarily the worst thing. Talk about that as well. Uh, two, jump at the edges. When you're making your jumps, you got to make sure you jump far enough. That's a big part of it. Three, use the temporary invincibility when either you get hit or an enemy gets hit. We'll talk about that. And finally, force the dream world in some situations. Sometimes you want to be in the dream world, and we'll talk about that as well. I gotta say, the uh, the, the handling of the character and the gameplay, it feels really good in this game. <laughs> it's one of the better titles for the NES, actually. It's something you probably wouldn't expect me to say in a class on A Nightmare on Elm Street, but, uh, but yeah, when you jump and you, you know, you want to stagger your jump a little bit, or... The, the speed at which you're moving one direction or the other, you can adjust that really easily with left or right. It's very responsive. Uh, the character jumps well. There's a lot of hang time, so it's uh, it's not too difficult to avoid enemies when it's one-on-one. -on -one. It's just when things get a little crazy, there's a lot of things happening at once. That's when the difficulty ratchets up. Grab some coffee there. We'll bring in Blaze in a bit to talk about the items of this game, but... I think uh, in A Nightmare on Elm Street, the coffee is pretty straightforward when I mention the sleep timer in the top left, but we also have these tokens we're picking up again. Blaze is going to talk about that there's different dream warriors in this game you can be, and uh, we'll have Fluff compare them all a little bit later, but it's already time for the first boss. Let's go to our resident boss expert, Gary. It's Scary Gary's Boss Beater. Alright, the first boss in A Nightmare on Elm Street is Freddy's Hand. But it's chained up, thankfully, so we just gotta stay on the left side of the screen. Be the acrobat, you should have picked up this token during the stage, and just toss the javelins. If you stay all the way to the left, uh, Freddy's hand can't get you, so just be patient. You'll take him down. Good luck. Thank you, Gary. Yeah, that, if you're uh, struggling with that first boss, then <laughs> this is probably beyond an 8 out of 10 for you, but yeah. You have no reason to take any damage if you just stay on the left for that first boss there with the acrobat. I should mention, so we, we go in these houses at the start of the game, 
the first three houses on the block are uh, random as to which one you can go in first. So if the uh, just hold up outside of a house, if you can't go in, go right to the next one. If you can't go in that one, go to the final one, the third one. And then uh, after you go in that one, just know that the next house is going to be one of the remaining two. And then uh, once we take out the first three stages in those three houses in whatever order they're in, then we'll head further right down uh, down Elm Street, I suppose we're on, and uh, take on some of the other levels. Even if the door is closed, you can still go inside, as you can see right there. He just walks right in. But now with an overview of some of the items, or all of the items that we've been picking up, let's throw it to Blaze. All right, let's talk about the items you will find in a nightmare on Elm Street. First, the bones. You need these not only to complete the game, but to progress to the next section in every level. So make sure you don't miss these. Sometimes they can blend in very well with the background. So keep an eye out for the bones where you can't move on. Secondly, a nice cup of coffee. What teen doesn't love these? These will wake you up, refill your sleep meter. Sometimes you don't want that, as the professor's been talking about. But in either case, that's what it does. Then if you do happen to fall asleep, you can grab the 1980s and 90s style boombox to leave the dream world. And then finally we have the three tokens. The acrobat, the shadow warrior, and the necromancer token. Once you pick up one of these, you have that ability in the dream world for the rest of the game. Make sure you grab one of each. If you're playing with other people, don't be greedy, just grab one. It only gives you points after you get the first one of each type, so make sure you spread them out so everybody has every form available to them when it comes to fighting bosses or when you're just in the dream world in general. But there you go, the items of a nightmare on Elm Street. Good luck. Thanks, Blaze. Yeah, you'll see, we couldn't even pick up that phone when we were the acrobat. Different characters have different quirks like that as we're in the dream world now, obviously. Our sleep meter ran out. We can grab that radio, like Blaze said, to come out of here, but not necessarily the worst thing right now. It's possible that we can run into Freddy while we're uh, down here, but uh, where did I miss a bone? Oh, it's right, right there. Yeah, they blend in easily. Gotta watch out for that. One of the annoying things about this game, which makes it so difficult, is the fact that the enemies just keep coming. They keep spawning. So we managed to thread the needle there. Haven't gotten hit yet. As far as I can tell. Next boss, Gary. Boss Peter. Freddy's head moves around, but if you stay to the left side of the screen, he can't touch you. The only thing you want to watch out for is the projectiles that he spits out. And uh, if you stay ducked, you can take it out in most of them. Just watch out for the bouncing ones and uh, watch out when those get to your side of the screen. But just like the hand, just duck. Keep tossing those javelins as the acrobat, you'll take them down. Thank you very much, Gary. Should be the last time we have to slum it with the acrobat. And I only say slum it because, well, I'll let Fluff explain it, actually, as we head to the final of the three houses we haven't been to yet, so head to whichever one that is. And now with a breakdown of the three different dream warriors, as well as the, the basic teenager that you play as, here's Fluff. Including the boring teenager, I'm going to rank the four character types in A Nightmare on Elm Street from worst to best. First, we have the aforementioned bland teenager. Loser! With no special abilities aside from zoning out in class and having acne breakouts, a teenager is the worst character type, which is unfortunate because unless you're in the dream world, you're stuck with them. Next, we have the acrobat, boasting what might be the highest jump and quickest release on their attack by tossing javelins. The acrobat is a solid, not to mention likely the only dream warrior character type you'll have early on. Coming in as the second best is the Necromancer. Their jump rivals the Acrobat in terms of height, and the added bonus of slowly floating down makes it a great way to avoid enemies, not to mention it's the only way to make one particular jump late in the game. They also have the longest attack with their generic magic attack. But at number one, the best character in A Nightmare on Elm Street is the Shadow Warrior. They don't have the height or distance jumping perks of the other Dream Warriors, but jumping with the Shadow Warrior engages an automatic jump kick, which damages virtually any enemy you touch. Factoring in the fact that a recently damaged enemy can't hurt you, you've got a nearly invincible, offensive-minded character who can pass through virtually any enemy in this game. 
and one who tops this list of the best characters in A Nightmare on Elm Street for the NES. Thank you very much, Fluff. Good call, well said. I have a nasty habit of mistakenly calling the, uh, the Dream Warriors all Shadow Warriors. That's just the one particular type. I'm not sure why they had to make it confusing by putting Warrior at the end of one of the Dream Warriors, but not all of them with the Shadow Warrior, but, uh, is what it is. I'm going to leave these bones here and just... You can see the hatch that we need to go through in the end. That bat was coming in hot. Every now and then you get one of those. And that's probably going to spawn on the way back, too. You only need to grab one of each token, by the way. Once you have it, you have it for life. I think Blaze mentioned that, but... Yeah, the, the multiple tokens are for the... If you have multiple people playing with you, so you can save it for them, but... Yeah, if you lose a life, or you lose all your lives, and you have to use a continue, you'll still have any of the, the Dream Warrior tokens that you already picked up, so... Just gotta hit select in the Dream World, and you can cycle between them. And, uh, whenever you fight a boss, you always default to the, uh, the, the Dream World, so... You always have access to whatever Dream Warrior tokens that you've picked up during a boss battle. Just keep that in mind. And speaking of bosses... Boss Beater! Right Freddy's hand! This time it's unchained. This time you should have the Shadow Warrior, the Yin Yang token. Use this and use those jump kicks. Stay in the middle of the screen. Use the jump kick to jump through him and not take any damage. Just rinse and repeat this strategy. Be careful because the hand will be bouncing at different heights each time. There's no rhyme or reason to uh, how high it jumps. It doesn't correspond or correlate to how high or low he is on the screen all the time. So be ready. Be ready to move out of the way. Get those jump kicks in. You'll take him down. Yeah, you can see on display right there why the Shadow Warrior is so good. Just going right through the boss. Taking no damage. It's, you know, it's an added bonus. It's a twofer, you know offense with a little defense mixed into it, so that's no wonder why Fluff ranked number one, although I have to say I do like the the Necromancer just for getting around and for the range of their attacks, but anyway, this row of bats. Now we can finally head to the right, now that we've taken down all the conventional house levels there. And we're going to head all the way to the right, to the very end of Elm Street, to the Junkyard, past Elm Street High. I'm sure why there's so many <laughs> snake. What are the property values like on Elm Street? I guess they must be dirt cheap. That has to be the a lot of the allure for moving to this neighborhood. Or if the realtor mentions that whenever you fall asleep, if you have any teenagers in the house, they'll probably be hunted. Maybe even killed by Freddy Krueger. Probably not something you mention when you're working on commission. But anyway, let's get another fluff fact with fluff. A Nightmare on Elm Street is yet another LJN published title based on a film or television property. Like I mentioned in the many other classes we've done on LJN games at this point, they were not involved in the actual development of the game. LJN outsourced development of their film licensed games to a handful of the same developers. And with the case of A Nightmare on Elm Street, they turned to frequent collaborator Rare, who had recently completed fine work on the previous year's NES adaptation of Who Framed Roger Rabbit. While A Nightmare on Elm Street isn't of the same quality, it's a decent title which likely fits somewhere in the middle of the games, bearing the LJN logo. Yeah, again, I can't say this is a bad game. It's, it's really not. It's just, uh, it's challenging. And, uh... You know, I guess the gameplay gets a little samey after a while. There's, what, seven stages, I suppose? Some of them are much longer than others. We've had some relatively short ones so far. It's a tidy little game, though. It's about a 40-minute game, I'd say. Top to bottom. Not too bad. A little longer than... See, the bones kind of blend in a little bit there, the white. Against the, uh, the, the shine of the cars. A little bit longer than uh, Friday the 13th. There's the coffee. Again, it's it's really just 
your prerogative whether or not you want to pick up the coffee. Sometimes you just want to hang out and enter the dream world. The enemies are a bit more difficult, but it kind of balances out with the fact that you have better abilities with all of the, uh, the dream warriors, so... You know, you can float through things a little easier with the, the necromancer and kick through enemies with the, the shadow warrior, so... Yeah, sometimes it's better just to take your time, catch your breath, Take down the bats, you know, just figure out as we get the, the Necromancer hat there. Find the opening here. Pretty constant. Oh, first damage. Oh well. Gary? Boss beaters. Right, the skeleton bat. Once again, we want to be the Shadow Warrior. Kind of a similar strategy as the last time we fought Freddy's hand unchained. Uh, stay in the middle, use those jump kicks, be quick. This time we have those projectiles, so, uh, and, and the, uh, the smaller bats. So watch out for them. Uh, just use those jump kicks, be quick. Have those reaction speeds up and moving, and you will take them down. Thank you very much, Gary. I should mention that uh, you can take four hits before you die, before you lose a life. What are we up to right now? We have eight lives right now, so there you go. We're pretty healthy on lives. But every time you beat a boss, the uh, your hit points, which aren't showing on the screen, they get topped off again. So we can take another four hits now before we die. So just something to keep in mind. If you're getting smacked around a lot and you beat a boss after you've taken three hits, no worries, as we head into the cemetery now. Seems like a terrible idea. Also seems like a terrible idea of building a cemetery on a lake. Or a river. <laughs> Whose idea was that? Elm Street is all kinds of backwards. Again, it's just... You know? It's just so cheap. I guess, that's, that's the best way of putting it. You can see those little fly enemies spawn out of there, so keep that in mind. I think this is the only time we have these bubbles. Maybe there's one more instance somewhere later in this level. That might be the only one. Make sure the screen is moving. We don't want to be at the front of that screen. When it starts to scroll, not knowing what's in front of us. Oh, there's an enemy that just spawned out of nowhere right there. You can see they're starting to throw some more obstacles at us, more projectiles, more enemies. Yeah, I don't think I would come to a funeral here. A little too, a little too busy, a little too much going on. I mean, if you're the funeral director, what are you, you going to look the family of the deceased in the eye and say, alright, so when, when you get to the cemetery, you're going to have to make a lot of very dangerous jumps to avoid falling into the water. Watch out for the ghost piranhas. And... Anyway. <laughs> Next boss, Gary. Boss beaters. Right, the ghost. It's a pattern with a lot of these bosses. Just uh, be the shadow warrior, stay in the middle of the screen, and they just do that bouncing back, left and forth, instead of uh, little little uh, skull bats this time. You have little ghosts to deal with that just look like they're over everything. They've had a day. But watch out for them. Same strategy. Just kick through everything. Be careful. Don't put yourself in a corner. Don't box yourself in, and you'll take them down. Thank you, Gary. I just love the animation on these mini-ghosts. They're just so livid with us. Like we, uh... Like we were involved in a fender bender with them and they're... Weren't you looking? What, you, what, were, you, what were you thinking? Were you texting? What, what were you doing? Do you have insurance? Anyway, put them down. Another key? Need all the keys to, uh, unlock. I don't know if it's the next stage, or if you need all the keys to unlock Elm Street High at the very end. Regardless, we're going to enter Freddy's home now, which is in disrepair. Should have been condemned. Jumping spiders, all the, the leaks. Mostly the spiders and the, <laughs> the pits. Way too many pits. Again, the realtor would have to fudge that a little bit, you know. Trying to talk to Freddy. Just saying, you know, I'm, I'm having a hard time selling your house. Home buyers these days, they don't want pits, you know? It's a real turnoff. In this market, you can't have a pit in your house. You've got like 30, Freddy. Don't get me started on the bats. 
and the leaking whatever that is. It's blood in the dream world, I'm pretty sure. The teeth, head crushers, whatever you want to call <laughs> I don't know what those things are. It's just a very silly game. And one you can actually play with up to three other people. And with details on that now is Fluff. A Nightmare on Elm Street may seem like one of the last titles you think of when you think co-op, let alone four-player co-op games. But it's one of a couple dozen games which made use of the NES 4 score adapter. The NES 4 score, titled after an unlikely play on President Abraham Lincoln's Gettysburg 1863 address, was one of the more successful NES peripherals which allowed up to four players in a select number of NES games. Released in 1990, the four score featured a two-pronged output which fed into both inputs on the NES itself. This device had four inputs for NES controllers and even had the ability to enable turbo on either or both the A or B button making it a handy device to take the place of a turbo controller on the market, even if you didn't have four people on hand. Other notable titles which allowed for more than two concurrent players included Gauntlet 2, Kings of the Beach, Monopoly, and RC Pro-Am 2, all allowing four players on the NES years before it would become a standard on later generation systems. Yeah, we had the four score adapter, and uh, it, it was pretty cool. I think the <laughs> the main thing we used it for, because we didn't play a lot of four-player games, my brother and I, we uh, mainly just, or I myself, really liked it for just the fact that you could have turbo on a normal NES controller, you know, because whenever you were buying a turbo controller, it was a different controller. It didn't have that perfect feel of just the normal NES controller with just the simple A and B button. It was just nice to be able to have those automatic as turbo if you wanted to. Of course... You know, it's all or nothing, that's the only drawback to not having designated and dedicated uh, turbo buttons, but anyway, jump up here to the left to get out of here, or jump up, there we go. Yeah, for the dream portions, the uh, necromancer is a good move, but you see we're sticking with the shadow warrior fluff's pick because just the fact that we don't have to worry about taking damage as long as we're doing that jump kick nine times out of ten, so. We don't have quite the same range that some of the others. Make sure you jump off of this. It'll go so low that you'll uh, essentially lose a life as if you fell through the pit, so. This music right here, that's like straight out of RC Pro-Am, actually, which we did a recent class on. But you can definitely hear that it's a rare title from that stretch of the music right there. Pretty good music, I have to say, on the uh, the outside, on Elm Street itself, and you're not inside a house. That's a pretty rockin' theme. Surprisingly good. You don't expect that in a game like this. Also, when you're used to LJN horror titles being more like the, you know, five or six notes on repeat that you had in Friday the 13th, the outside theme, I guess the inside theme is pretty, uh, pretty lean as well in terms of notes. They didn't, uh, they didn't, didn't go overboard on the uh, the notes budget with Friday the Thirteenth. It came in on budget. That's what I'm trying to say. It's a very simple soundtrack. But, uh, but yeah, I still have a, a lot of love for that game. Check out our walkthrough that we did on that, by the way. All part of the. The playlist in the description of this video, every single class we've ever done here on Video Games 101, they're all covered right there. And by the way, if you haven't already done so, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel to enroll in this class. We do one of these classes every single week. Love to have you enrolled. As we are about to enter the dream world again, it can happen at some inopportune times. You can be in midair. And uh, in a spot, yeah, have to go low here. So we're going to be in the dream world for this stretch. I just want to wait until that takes over before we put ourselves in a precarious jump, which we're not ready for, and we and the enemies switch over and everything. At least now we can go back to the Shadow Warrior. And just kick right through these enemies as that leak turns to blood. 
final bone right over here. You see that barrier disappeared when we grabbed it. Fight our way back up. Got one more floor to fight through. And there's those those fed up ghosts. <laughs> Skull bats there. Just take out with the jump kick. Kind of on the fence as to whether or not I want to pick up the uh, the boombox there, but. So we go back to our boring teenager tank top look. All the different uh, characters in the four-player mode, they all look slightly different. There's a couple couple fellas, a couple ladies. They don't have any different abilities or anything like that. They all act the same way. As normal teenagers. Can't even avoid the coffee right there. But even as the teen, like I was talking about this earlier, just praising the gameplay a little bit, just... You know, so many games, when you jump in a certain direction, it makes you commit to that, you know? It's just, it's bulky. If you jump to the right, you can't react until you touch down on the ground again. And, it, you know, that's, to its credit, it's realistic. <laughs> in real life, you can't turn around mid-jump. But, uh, but in a game like this, it's very much appreciated. So far, so good. We haven't lost a life yet. Knock on wood. Keep the streak as long as we can keep it going. Redundant as that sounds. It's the final bone. Thankfully the bats can't come down here. Yeah, just take your time. Usually the case in this game, like I said. And next boss, Gary. Boss beaters. All right, Freddy's head and hand gets my vote for toughest boss in a nightmare on Elm Street. First, you want to be the warrior and the necromancer. Transition between the two. Stay on the left-hand side of the screen. And the strategy is basically, if the enemies are far away from you, use the necromancer's attack. Once they get close, quickly switch to the shadow warrior and do that jump kick to protect yourself and maybe do some damage as well to the enemies. Uh, if they're above you, you might just want to duck, but if you're not sure, go with that jump kick. You'll hit them, you'll be temporarily invincible as they're flashing. Just repeat this process, switching back and forth between the two characters. Remember, it's one select from Shadow Warrior to Necromancer, and then three from the Necro to get back to the Shadow Warrior. Repeat this process. Good luck, you'll take him down. Yeah, that's how you have to think of it, just... Don't even overthink, just now I gotta hit select one time, then three times. One time and three times, just in the moment though. We're gonna speed things up here, just so we can get back to the dream world and make this next stretch a little bit easier. This is the hardest stage in the game, it's the longest stage as well, but uh, yeah. Speed this up, go to the dream world, pull out the necromancer for some of these jumps in particular kind of alternate between the Necromancer and the, the Shadow Warrior, where you can see all that hang time we get to enjoy. Sometimes you just want to float down. That was close. That's a jump you probably can't make with any other type. That's not even the jump that I was referring to. That's coming up a little bit later. This is the jump. Right here. You can only make that jump, as far as I know, with the Necromancer, because you bang your head right there, so... Not enough headroom to make that jump with any other character type, it's just... The, uh, the, the staggered floating that you can get by with the, uh, the Necromancer to make that work. Works well when we need to... Regulate our, our come down speed, pick up some bones in a busy area. 
just makes gliding around the stages in general a little easier. Make sure I didn't miss a bone over there. There's the lockers. I don't know that I would send my children to Elm Street High. Then again, I don't know that I'd live on Elm Street High. It's just so cheap. Fluff. I mentioned the popular NES 4 score adapter earlier on as an official NES peripheral which allowed up to four players to play on a select number of NES titles simultaneously. But the 4 score wasn't the only peripheral from Nintendo which boasted this ability. The NES satellite was released a year earlier in 1989. Its main intended purpose was to allow players to roughly double the space between themselves and the NES console. The controllers plugged into the adapter, which in turn used an infrared signal to reach a receiver, which itself connected to the front of the NES, thereby doubling the range. Perhaps even more notably, was that the satellite had four inputs and turbo buttons, just like the 4Score, allowing up to four players on the same library of games as the 4Score. Assuming players had six C-cell batteries lying around to power the satellite unit, of course. Never even heard of that peripheral before this class. Thanks, Fluff. He saw the uh, infamous Freddy's coming message before uh, Freddy showed up. Yeah, we're in the dream world. He has a chance of catching up to you if you're in there for long enough like we were here. I just It makes me laugh, the uh, the trademark symbol on the, uh, on the Freddy's coming. <laughs> I don't know, it's the little thing. There's the first death. All right. Well, now I don't really care now that that's been compromising. I'll probably play a little bit looser here, if I'm honest. We're going to bring in um, Gary when we face Freddy for the, the final battle in this game. To sort of tough it out there with our own strategy. But uh, yeah, a little bit later we'll see what Gary recommends for that battle. But uh, yeah, if you do run into him in the field, then uh, yeah, be ready. It happens every now and then. That, that is the downside of spending too much time in the dream world. It's like they know that it's it's kind of easier when you have access to the, the dream warriors just getting through the stages, but no thanks, I'm good. Ah, oh, they knocked me into it, didn't they? <laughs> That's so rude. That's the rudest thing they could have done as I instantly changed my clothes back to my douchey tank top. Oh well. Yeah, as I said, we're definitely playing a little bit looser now. I don't care. Take some damage here or there. It's a little easier not lining up everything quite as much. Didn't quite make that jump. It's the whole, you know, close. Gotta be at the very edge. Probably at the top of that too. I bet having a running start would help as well. There you go. A little bit of everything. Running start, being at the edge, being at the height of that platform. Make sure there's no sword coming out of the, uh, or knife, whatever that is, coming out of the floor where that bone was. These are all Freddy's bones, by the way. Freddy is apparently entirely comprised of femurs. Not sure how that works. But, uh, we need to collect them all. We're going to take them to the incinerator. Burn them all. I guess that's what happened in one of the films. I don't know. I'm, To be honest, I'm so unfamiliar with the uh, the movies of A Nightmare on Elm Street that I, I'm much more familiar with the uh, the Simpsons parody of it. When, uh, don't touch Willie, good advice, and then they ended up burning him up at the furnace, and then uh, he started killing all the children of Springfield. It's weird. <laughs> really letting the, uh, the wheels come off of the uh, kind of the vehicle at this point in the game. Careful, make sure you're at the very edge of that jump right there, otherwise the uh, low headroom will make you fall into that pit. Thankfully when you die, when you lose all your lives, and you have to use a continue, it drops you right back where you were. None of this garbage about sending you back to the start of the level. That would be cruel. We'll grab those bones on the way back, because that's where the hatch was, or that's where we saw the barrier, that's where we're headed. Make sure you time that right, otherwise you'll fall into the pit right there. And there's one or two more this way. We're 
about to enter that dream world one more time. Should be able to make it to real Freddy before we run into him again. Just, just cause, time-wise. We enter the dream world here. For the last time. It's not the worst thing right here, honestly, with uh, these close quarters. Probably gonna wanna switch be between the, uh, the Shadow Warrior and the Necromancer here. Just to get through some of these sections, make some of these jumps a little easier for us. Say, playing loose. At this point, I think, assuming we uh, just follow Gary's boss beaters, there is, I didn't mention this, but there, ooh, that was close. <laughs> Definitely needed the Necromancer to get out of that jam. There is a boss rush at the end of this game, right before we take on Freddy, which we're coming up on right now, actually. So just use those same strategies. In this case, I don't know, just stick with the Necromancer since he has a little extra range. Same strategies, though, for these bosses. They're all exactly the same, I'm pretty sure. Up until we get to Freddy himself. While we're doing the boss rush, at least some of the easier bosses here, let's get one final fluff fact, this time about Friday the 13th, the film series itself. Fluff? As always with games based on films, I'll give a few fun facts about that, or in this case, the films of the A Nightmare on Elm Street series. The first film, A Nightmare on Elm Street, was released in 1984 and directed by Wes Craven. It introduced the character Freddy Krueger, a disfigured and vengeful spirit who terrorizes teenagers in their dreams. Portrayed by actor Robert Englund, Freddy Krueger became one of the most iconic villains in horror film history with his striped sweater, hat, distinctive burned appearance, and bladed glove. The novel concept of the franchise introduced Freddy's ability to kill his victims in their dreams, which translates to their deaths in the real world. The original film was a success and spawned a number of sequels. Notably, 1987's A Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors, is considered to be one of the better sequels in the series and introduced the concept of teenagers with special dream-related abilities who fight back against Freddy, just like in this game. There you go. That might be cool. I might be uh, curious to check that out at some point after playing this see how they treat the different uh, character types, if it was just the, the three that are featured here, or if they had more of them going on, or maybe they had completely unique ones that have nothing to do with the ones here. Have to be careful with the little baby skulls that pop out with this boss, because, you know, the mindset is, oh, I kill one because it's getting close to me, so I'm good now, but then as soon as you take one out, the, uh, the Mama Skull Bat drops out a fresh one every single time, so... Kind of twists my brain a little bit as I'm taking them on. Just like right there. <laughs> That's a perfect example. Because you don't think of it like that. You're thinking, oh, I'm clearing the board. I'm in good shape. What we got now? Ah, the ghost. The, uh, the little ghosts that are just fed up over everything. Come on, spit one out. There it is. <laughs> How could you take out a loan with that interest rate? Are you crazy? I raised you better than this. What were you thinking? Just insert your own scenario. <laughs> Whatever's driving that ghost off the walls right there. Just whatever's made them hit their limit. Like the double hits, those are nice when you can get those in in the corner before you come back down. They're pretty generous, honestly, with the uh, with the kicks with the Shadow Warrior. We're coming up on Gary's toughest boss, the combination. I want to get to the left side for this, actually. Yeah. Let's just try the Ranzal move, which I coined from. Uh, Double Dragon 3, which we did a class on. Check that out. That's part of the playlist as well. But he had a jump kick move, which was incredibly effective. It was 
basically uh, just a wall of death to anyone who approached it. Anytime someone got close... Yeah, you know, I'm gonna stick with the, the Shadow Warrior here. Stick in the corner like Gary mentioned. And anytime someone gets near, yeah, with some exceptions. Didn't always work for Ranz out too, it was more of a 9 times out of 10 type move. Still probably the best strategy. I don't think I mentioned this, but the more people you have playing with you, the more health the boss has, so... We only need to deal with a quarter of the boss's health every single time, because it's just us. Every player you add, it goes up another quarter, so... Anyway, time for Freddy. Gary, take us home. Boss beater. Right, Freddy himself. Not too difficult after that last boss. Want to be the necromancer and react to his pattern. He does a slash, jump, slash when he touches down, then he walks. He repeats this process, so just attack him, jump over him, or go underneath him depending on what he's doing. Repeat this process, watch out for the hands, you can take him down with the sorcerer's attack, but uh, yeah, take him down with this process, good luck, and just like that, you have beaten a nightmare on Elm Street, congratulations. Thank you so much, Gary, and I know they gotta do it, but that trademark is just, come on. Come on, Rare. Come on, LJN. The evil is purged, fire purifies all, the bones are ashes, soon to be dust. He's dead, and the nightmare is ended. Or has it? I don't know, did anyone see them take his body to that uh, very inaccessible graveyard? Anyway, that's our time for this week. Thanks so much for attending this class. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already done so to enroll in this class. We do one of these every single week in the same spot. We'd love to have you enrolled. Click that like button if you don't mind. It really does help us out to make future classes for you. And leave a comment. We were beating this game before. Hopefully this Nightmare on Elm Street NES walkthrough helped you out. And we'll see you next week in the same spot for next week's class right here on Video Games 101. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and comment on this video, and click subscribe if you haven't already, as this seriously helps me to keep making great content for you. And check the description of this video to see what song is playing right now.